Hey, what's going on guys? I want to do a review of a very cool little knife. Uh, this is nothing new in the knife scene, but it's, uh, it's an oldie but goodie. This is the Cold Steel Super Edge. And this is a tiny little neck knife slash boot knife slash whatever you want it to be knife. Um, this is really cool. I've had this for a long time. This is not my first one. I carry this specific one on my boot. And we're going to talk about some different ways you may want to use this. But this is the biggest purpose of me getting this was this was actually on a pair of sneakers at one point. It was on my boot. I've had this one for a couple of years now. And basically with the SecureX sheath, I would lace my, my boot laces or my shoelaces right through the sheath. So it was mounted to the sheath and the top part of the um, uh, sheath here was rested against the tongue of whatever you know my boot or shoe was. So I can easily access the, uh, the knife, okay? It was convenient, it was out of the way, it's small enough where no one's even really noticed it. It's not like the big old knife hanging from your shoe. I've, since I've had it, I've never ever had anyone even see it or ask me about it ever. Out in public, when I was working, all my coworkers, no one knew I even had it until I pointed it out. Um, and even after I pointed it out, no one cared. Um, that's a great way to carry this. It's an awesome little knife for that. Also, it's a neck knife. Now, I've also carried this for a neck knife for a long time. There's one thing I want to say. It weighs almost nothing. Um, the knife itself is 0.8 ounces. Um, I don't know the weight with the sheath, but the sheath weighs less than the knife, so you're talking about less than two ounces altogether. Uh, it, it, it disappears on your neck. literally disappears. The only issue I've had with this, as small as it is and as compact as it is, as much as I love it, the two issues I had as a neck knife, one is that this um, this handle, which is the old Kraton handle, now the newer generations, I believe the uh, design is exactly the same, but the they're calling it Kray X. I don't know if it's the same material with a different name or a different material, but I love this stuff. It is awesome. It is so tacky and grippy. And by tacky, I don't mean like, you know, 70s or 80s decor. I mean, like, it's grippy. It's tacky, like um, slightly heated up rubber, you know? Uh, with the texturing on here, all the way around, all those little grooves and everything, and just that rubberized feel, it sticks. It sticks like Velcro to your hand, to anything. And when I say anything, I also mean your shirt and your skin. So if you had this against your bare skin, underneath your shirt, um, it would actually grip onto your skin and it would be a little uncomfortable. I would feel that kind of abrasiveness on my skin when I was wearing it as a neck knife. And then I wore it in between two different garments where I had it under a t-shirt and I had a hoodie over or a sweatshirt or something. Uh, it would grip the shirt material and actually twist my shirt a little bit while I was carrying it. The only other issue, although it's not that big of an issue, is the sheath bulges out here because there's a guard that goes all the way around. So it makes it for a little bit of a wider carry compared to brass blade, silent soldier. You can see even though it's much larger, much heavier, right? it's still a thinner profile. For a neck knife, you want it to be pretty darn flat. All right, and this handle is obviously a little bit wider. So as far as capability, uh, more of a capable knife, um, in my opinion, and a much flatter profile, which on your chest you want. You don't want it to bulge, you don't want it to be uncomfortable. Same thing with the CRKT Spew. I wanted to grab that to show you. Uh, very streamlined, very, very thin. Okay, for a neck knife, it's perfect. All right, also very lightweight. Even though this is tiny, and weighs less than this. Um, two inch blade on here. Great grip on that for, you know, it's overall size, it's still extremely grippy. But with this, you have a much larger, more comfortable handle, okay, and a, a much more capable, longer blade. All right, but more importantly, flats, okay? Even though this is bigger, bulkier, heavier, I will carry this more often as a neck knife than this simply because it's flat, okay? And it doesn't grip the material, material on my uh, uh, shirt. So anyway, there's lots of options out there you can use for neck knives, but I did want to mention it because it still makes a pretty decent neck knife. It's just for me, I found that I stopped carrying it because of those two issues. A little bit bulky and uh, too grippy uh, for that area. Um, it does have a little lanyard hole in the bottom. Because it is small, you only get a two finger grip on this, okay? Doesn't matter how small your fingers are, I don't think anyone can really squeeze three fingers on here. It's just, it's uncomfortable to push up that high. But extremely grippy, even though I only have two fingers, I feel very confident in holding this knife, okay? Holding it sideways like this, you can obviously put your finger on top, um, so you have a little bit more leverage when you're cutting, especially heavier cutting chores. You could wrap this, put this up towards your, by your first knuckle, all right, and get a full grip like this if you're really ripping down into cardboard and stuff. And it's still secure enough, but it leaves something that, to be desired. It's still, I wish it was a little bit longer. I know the whole idea is being very compact, and originally this does come, I think the new generation uh, has this as well, but it comes with a D-ring. And a lot of people like these for their keys, 
for your little keychain knife, okay? And in that respect, for a keychain knife, you do want this same form factor, all right, the same length, you know, handle to blade ratio. As a neck knife or a boot knife, you know, I would prefer the handle to come out maybe another half an inch for more grip. That'd be great, but it's not obviously its original uh, purpose for this knife. Um, blade steel on this is AUS-8. Two inches of fully serrated cold steel AUS-8 does the job. And something I want to show you, I want to give you a quick little demo, cutting some cardboard here. Um, I've never sharpened this. And as most of you know, serrations are extremely hard to sharpen. Let me talk about these serrations real quick. They have a scalp on the flats. And the micro serrations here are all very, very um, uh, short. And what I mean by short is that they're not very pointed. Actually, let me put a pen here. I'm going to show you a visual of what I'm talking about here, okay? So these serrations, let me give you a bigger view of what this may look like, okay? Big scallop. And then you have a lot of little mini serrations like this, okay? And then a big scallop, a lot of mini serrations, blah, blah, blah. I like that this isn't deep as opposed to, say, a scallop and then, you know, deep pointed serrations. The deeper those tiny ones are, the harder it is to actually cut through things. They actually snag. They have to be extremely sharp. You'll find this on a lot of cheap knives. The smaller portion of a serration, you have a wide area and then a bunch of little ones. The bunch of little ones, the deeper they are, I find the less useful they are. So as far as a serration pattern, cold steel does do a very good serration pattern. I would prefer, as far as serrations go in general, uh, if I were to do a fully serrated blade, I do prefer a constant scallop, just like Kershaw. I think Kershaw's scallion, um, or excuse me, scalloped serrations is the best performing serrations I've had yet on the market. The Vest serrations by CRKT are also very good up there, probably top five different uh, best uh, serration designs, Col um, Cold Steel and Spyderco also included in there. So as far as serrations go, I still think it's a very decent serration pattern. That's my whole point here. It does not snag very much. Now, even though I've been using this on and off for over a year, um, I never sharpened it. Serrations are inherently hard to sharpen, but it still holds a pretty decent edge. That AUS-8, because it's small, it doesn't get used all that often. It's still pretty sharp and I can't get through cardboard. But what I want to show you here, I'm slicing through cardboard. When you have a serration, but generally what's happening is when you go to slice down, at some point in the blade, you're not kind of slicing the entire time and using the whole length of the blade. More times than not, when you go to make your slice, it's picking one spot in the blade and then doing a push cut. Okay, that happens very often with serrations. Okay, otherwise, you're going to kind of scrape it. And right here, I don't know if you could tell, but very, very easy to push through. When I get to here, it kind of snags a little bit and then it, it sticks to a specific spot and then pushes through again. But even after all this time, I could still slice through with general ease. I'm using a little bit more pressure than if it was brand new, but the cuts I'm getting are pretty decent. Anywhere it's ripping is because it's catching on those small serrations, and you can even see the paper that's caught in there. Okay, that's where it's going to actually tear. All right? But, as you can see, the knife is still very functional. Extremely functional. So, performance is there. It's definitely there. If you're scared of sharpening serrations, let me put it to you this way. This is a $15 knife. Uh, you could pay up to $25 for this, but you know, look around a little bit. You'll find these for 15 bucks or so, even the new generations. Um, for $15, you can get a good little lightweight serrated blade, okay, two inches of cutting area. Uh, and this will probably last you realistically if you use it all the time, five or six months maybe. And then at that point, you can pretty much consider it a disposable knife. Now, no one wants to hear that. No one wants to hear I'm gonna buy a knife and then throw it out. But, you know, picture utility blades, you know, things of that nature. Most people who get these, they don't sharpen them because no one really knows how to sharpen them. I shouldn't really say no one knows how to sharpen serrations, but the general public, including myself, even people in the knife uh, community, I can sharpen serrations, but I can never ever get that factory edge on a serration pattern, particularly something that small. I can sharpen the flat here, I can sharpen all these scalped portions, but right in there, even with my tiny little tapered stones and stuff like that, I just can't do it. It's not realistic. So for me, I will use this knife, and I will continue to use this knife on and off until it's completely dull, until I can't use it anymore, or not completely dull, but once it gets to a point where I'm struggling to cut, I'll literally just throw it out. That's it. That was worth the $15 price tag for this knife. So although you, no one really wants to hear disposable knife, that's how I see this. I see this as a great little knife. It's great for backup. It's good for a little knife to, like I said, maybe your keychain. You can attach this to the uh, zipper pull on your hoodie if you wanted to. You do things like that. And just put them, you know, all different places. Attached to your bag. Just use it as a backup. 
But for me, I see it as more disposable. Once it starts dulling out on you, you're done with it. Um, the uh, overall length here is four and five sixteenths inches long. Um, so, you know, it's, it's very compact, even in the sheath. Lightweight, compact, very, very sharp. I mean, extremely sharp. Cold steel never disappoints with that. Factory Edge is up there with pretty much every major uh, good production uh, knife company out there. Um, so, great performance, lightweight, just a little chunky for a neck knife. As a boot knife, I told you, like lace through your, your shoes or uh, sneakers or your boots, great. Great little backup. All right, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a great day, and I will see you soon. Take care.